ladies and welcome to the broadcast. I am your host, Maggie Cavanaugh, and I am here today with the God Fitness panel. And you're probably going, what is the God Fitness panel? God Fitness today is a podcast that is like a subsidiary, if you will, of Moving Forward Ministries. But it's not just Maggie. It is a collaborative effort of godly women uh, and young women and even tweens and teens that contribute to it to get the word out that Jesus is Lord. And every month we have a special guest that joins us, someone that I respect and love that I trust enough to get on here and value. And so this month we have Sherry Capella with us. Sherry, give him a big wave down there. Super happy to have her here. Sherry is a Christian life coach and she has an amazing program and I'll let her share a little bit about that in a little while. Also, we have the amazing Greta Heisey, who is our worship leader for the Godfidence event. We just had one this past weekend. So give a shout out to Greta. We've got Vanetta Carter, which Vanetta is from Reigning in Him. <laughs> this broadcast is, you will get fired up. Okay, I'm just saying, you will get fired up. And in addition to her reigning in him, she has reigning in him for kids, where her teen and tween da grand or daughters um, and her granddaughters, I'm prophesying, they'll be involved in it eventually. But <laughs> yes, they come on and they speak words of encouragement and pray, and it's very powerful. We have my sister, Samantha. Samantha is the founder of Build Her a Bridge. And you guys have seen me and Samantha talk about a lot of different things before. She is a sister from another mista. And she has it in her heart to see life transformed. And um, and so we'll let her share a little bit about hers. I've got Robin here. Robin is a, a huge help with Moving Forward Ministries. And Michelle Lindsay, I always say I, I wouldn't be able to function if it wasn't for Michelle. She does so much for the ministry. It is incredible, all the admin stuff that she does, all the behind scenes uh, and so forth. And she is our head intercessor. So if you ever need a prayer request, uh, Michelle and Robin will tear it up in the spirit. Okay. They will, they will be on it. Like, what is it on? white on rice, uh, like they will, no joke, will tear down uh, anything hindering and pray until they see um, things move. So I want to thank all of y'all for being on the broadcast tonight. And we're tonight we're going to unpack a couple different things. Uh, it is September. September is uh, recovery month. September is also suicide prevention month. And a lot of us, the reason that we do the things we do is because We've overcome some stuff and we want to make sure that other people overcome as well. So I'm going to kick it off tonight with our special guest, Sherry Capilla. And so Sherry, tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. No feedback or anything. Okay, good. Um, so I am, you. okay, you asked me a little bit about myself. My name is Sherry Capilla and I'm a Christian life coach for weight loss. I specialize in weight loss. Um, I've written a weight loss program called the Seekers Method, where I teach women to seek God instead of a number on the scale and to have their sights set on the eternal instead of the temporal and to really help them to, you know, just step into the fullness of their faith and live for the right reasons instead of just all of the things that the world tells us to live for. So in a nutshell, that's what I do. 48 years old and I'm finally at the point where you know what? I lost all of the perimenopausal weight and I did it by seeking God instead of that number on the scale. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. It's it is amazing testimony of God's goodness, what he's done through your life and what he does for the clients that you work through. So we just had Cheryl hop in. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, guys. Good to see I'm, you. Glad I'm you're sitting, on here. I'm, I'm going in for Friends Forever Club until Nettie gets off of her meeting, her other yeah. meeting. No worries. No worries. Yeah, she was telling me she had a meeting. So we'll just actually go up this direction since you're there and your mic is undone and, and so forth. So y'all, this is Cheryl and Cheryl's with uh, Friends Forever Club with Nettie. And if you guys are not following them and Sherry and Samantha and everybody on social media, you definitely need to because you've heard me say it before and I'll say it again. I know the coolest people on the planet. And I met Cheryl and Nettie through Samantha. And so that this is kind of how we all flow. We're all sisters. We're all passionate about seeing the younger generation rise up and walk in their callings and be who they can be. I always say that if we can get them now, they're going to live a life they don't have to recover from. Obviously, we're all going to have disappointments. We're all going to have letdowns. But I'm talking about a lot of serious issues that people have come from root causes of trauma, 
bullying and things like that. So Cheryl, take a moment and talk a little bit about Friends Forever Club. Yeah, so um, for y'all who do not know Nettie, she will be popping in later. She is the founder and president of Friends Forever Club. It is an anti-bullying nonprofit. Um, it is educational, but we are um, Christians, so we do have faith-based beliefs. Um, so it started when Nettie was dealing with a lot of traumatic stuff at work and um, through her childhood and then eventually had asked. Um, she kind of had this vision of wanting to partner with a nonprofit that was anti-bullying, but after doing a lot of research, they she couldn't find any that stuck with her beliefs. So she's like, why don't I just create one? So that's when she created Friends Forever Club, and um, that's when she kind of asked me to be a part of it. And it, like I said at the um, at the confidence this past Saturday, that it was like an umbrella that kind of opened up. So that's what we do. We go out and we go to churches or schools or seminars or any place that will have us, so that we can preach and talk about the purpose, um, the message of purpose, value, hope, and um, worth. And it's all that is found in Christ. That you can't get that from the world. Amen, Cheryl. Amen. And Cheryl did an amazing demonstration of how value works and how we perceive value. So it's such a blessing to have both you and Nettie there this past Saturday. And I'm incredibly grateful for my sister, Samantha, because that's how I found out about y'all. So Samantha, build her a bridge. Come on, girl. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so I am the founder and executive director of Build Her Bridge. Uh, we are a resource guide for teen girls and their families. We provide mentoring. We have a mental health referral and resource. So if any teen girl comes to us and says, I really feel like I need to seek a therapist or I need someone to talk to, we can either pair them up with a mentor to walk alongside them or we refer them to one of the therapists that partner with us. And the last thing we do is we financially help these families pay for counseling. We know how expensive counseling is, um, so we help offset the cost of counseling. Um, our motto, as you can see on my hat, is real, raw, relatable. And that's just the, the kind of conversations and um, topics that we have is just real, honest, raw conversation. Um, we I, And I live by this. I always tell the girls as well that it's okay to not be okay. It's not okay to stay there. So always seek help. Always reach out to someone. Um, that's just a little bit about what we do in a nutshell. So with that being said, I know, um, and sure, I just got your message. I'm so sorry, girl. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, Samantha, for those of y'all that don't know, Samantha and Nettie and Cheryl, they do this thing. And so if you have a, a location where you would like some spirit filled women to come in and do a presentation, do music, they do this thing called you matter right? Because everybody matters. And I think so many times people don't understand who, matter of fact, I know they don't know who they are in Christ. I know I personally did not know for years. Samantha, can you talk a little bit about the You Matter tour? Yeah. So Nettie, Cheryl, and I go around to a lot of the juvenile detention centers, um, the I guess you would call it like almost like the halfway houses for teen girls where um, they're in a foster care situation or they've been kicked out of their home or they simply just needed a place to be. So they are residential, like they live in these facilities. I mean, some of them are like truly like locked down. You go through one gate, wait to, you know, go through another gate. I mean, we're talking about serious things, but we go there, Nettie does the music, Cheryl, speaks into them with scripture. I come in there with scripture. And again, just like our motto at Build Her Bridge, real raw relatable, like we just really talk to these girls and really just love on them and show them the way, the truth, the life, which is Jesus Christ. Um, we tell them all the time. I know I say this, Cheryl says this, you don't know who you are because you don't know whose you are. So we really talk to them um, very honestly and very openly. Um, we're going to one actually this coming Sunday. So they invited us to come back. So we're obviously doing something right. So, um, and this next time we're actually gonna be talking to them. Um, our topic for this Sunday is I'm out now what? A lot of these girls now are reaching out to us and saying like, I just got out last week or I'm getting out next week. What do I do? I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. 
A lot of these girls don't know that you, Tennessee, you can go to school for free for two years. Like no one has bothered to share that information with them. Probably no one has cared to share that information with them and we care. So that's why it's you matter because we care. So. I love it. I love it. God is moving in this and y'all listen. So make sure that you go to Build Our Bridge and like that page. Make sure that you go to Sherry Capilla's page and like it and follow it. Make sure that you go to Friends Forever Club. And I got my t-shirt. Okay. I'm just saying I got my t-shirt this last weekend. So but she's got it on. So it's got the power of God. And I love the motto. They're in with the out crowd <laughs> or in with the outcast. Is that it? In with the outcast. That's it. That. In with the outcast. In with the outcast. Well, Cheryl, we, I just yesterday was praying and the Lord downloaded the name of the God in January and it's going to be living inside out. And so because we're going to be talking a lot about inner beauty and who we are more on that and so forth. So I love it. So Vanetta, Vanetta, tell them a little bit about reigning in him and also tell them about reigning in him with the kids and why you're so passionate about this. I mean, it just, when you speak, whether it's on, she gets on TikTok, y'all. So, <laughs> and she speaks life and these kids are listening. Talk about that, Vanetta. Yes. Um, so for over 15 years, I, I, I was praying to the Lord and asking the Lord to allow me to have a talk show. And I remember three years ago, I was praying and the Lord said, give me something to work with. So I just started just using my phone and I just started just going live and just started doing my talk show reigning in him. And he told me to create an opportunity for people to share their story for his glory. So it's all about him being glorified. It's all about empowering people to know that they can live loud for the Lord, that they too can be victorious. I believe that God wants us to be whole every area of our life, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, whole you know so that's what i do i get on there i pray you know the children they get on there they speak to other children in their age range and even there's been adults that reached out to me and was ministered to by the children and i i, I never tell them what to talk about because i believe that you're never too young to hear from god and as parents we have to teach and equip and train our kids to know that they can hear from god so I'll ask them, I'll say, what are you going to be sharing on the program today? And they'll say, well, when I spend time with the Lord, this is what I got in my devotion time. And I tell them, go for it. You know, so I just thank the Lord for an opportunity to let people know that they too can reign in him. So. I love it. I love it. And I was telling uh, before the broadcast and we were having a brief debriefing of this past weekend's event. And I had two different adults come up to me and said, man, that Victoria, now Victoria's 13, okay? I had her when we when they got done performing a song, because her kids are musically gifted, I asked her to pray before they went into the small groups, and she prayed powerfully. I had two adults come up and say, man, I felt the anointing. That was powerful. And so when you, you know, listen, we can't be so stuck that we can't receive from, you, you know what I'm saying? The whole thing about uh, this gathering, if you will, is the older pouring into the younger and the younger pouring into the youngest. We have got to get at this together because every one of us could attest with the exception of maybe Greta because Greta's 18. And, but, but we could all attest if we had people like this speaking into our life, our lives would be different. Our lives would have been so different. And like Samantha said, they just don't know. So Greta, Greta, you are such a blessing to me personally. Uh, Greta's my girl. She she leads us in worship. And she did a great job of sharing the importance of worship. Even talking about Jehoshaphat and stuff in the to this mm -hmm. past week. Worship, I don't know. For those of y'all that was there, I mean, what'd y'all think of worship? <laughs> Glory, glory, glory. Woo, it was so good. So good. So, uh, Greta, can you speak to the younger generation why coming to an event like Godfidence is important? Mm, that's a good question. Well, first and foremost, it's a community of other believers. And I think that's super important. You know, even Jesus had his disciples and that was like his community of friends and believers and that he surrounded himself with. Um, and I think that's a huge deal nowadays, especially like finding solid 
friends that aren't going to just, you know, lead by emotions or how they feel, you know, but by leading, by listening to the Lord and his voice and following Mm -hmm. him. And those are the kind of friends that you want to surround yourself with. Those are the kind of people that you can grow with. And um, so with confidence, there's just a community of believers and and people that are like-minded and maybe people who haven't grown up in a Christian home or whatever your background is, but it's, it's a place where, you know, we're not afraid of your questions. You know, you can be who you are, um, but we're going to, we're going to talk to you. We're going to teach you about whose you can be, you know, Mm -hmm. if you don't already know whose you are, who you belong to or who you are. Um, And so I think it's just super important Um, even for myself, like I was totally blessed just being a part of it and learning, um, about who's I am again and like leadership. And, um, that was so cool, you know, being blessed as I'm, you know, trying to lead and bless other people. It's like, well, it's like, here, here's a blessing on top of that, you know? So I think that's (laughs) so cool. Um, you know, God is just so cool. But, uh, I just say like, even if you don't know why you should come, it doesn't mean it's not a good reason to not come. I just say, come. If you're invited, if you know about it, just come, bring some friends. You're going to be blessed. Either way, in or out, you're going to be blessed. And uh, Lord willing, he's going to speak to you and and, um, you'll find that community of people that, you know, your heart needs, you know, and ultimately like have that connection with that, with the Lord, you know? So that's what I would say. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. It says actually, actually, it is we heal in community. And when you put Christ in the center of any mix, even this right here, us talking, all of us sisters in Christ, all from different backgrounds. I, I'm looking around. I think we're all from probably different states. Uh, we're, we're just we're all over, but but it is that center of being um obedient to him and wanting to see him become famous through us, through everything that we do. And I absolutely love that. So Robin, you spent years in Indianapolis. Robin and I are from the same city. We did not know each other there, but we know each other in Tennessee. And you spent a lot of time dealing with street ministry and kids that are really in in the roughest of the roughest of neighborhoods and things like that. And so maybe they don't know about involvement in, you know, churches and things like that. What do you think with it being uh, September suicide prevention uh, recovery month? What do you think of these kids? How can we pray for them and how can people reach out to kids that are not in the know? They don't have Christian friends. They don't have people. What is a good way to outreach in that demographic? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, you know, when we think about how we come, some of us grew up in a, um, a family where we had Christian values and some did not, but the Lord laid on my heart early on uh, the brokenness. When I, I asked him, I said, break my heart for what breaks yours. And, and poof, he brought in, you know, the at risk families and it started with the kids and it grew into the, the moms and dads, aunts, uncles. Um, and so, you know, I was like, I'm not really sure how to reach him because I didn't, I didn't grow up that way, but God opened the, my eyes and the doors. And so to have the heart and the discerning eyes to even see. To, and to go out and just be vulnerable and start talking because the reality is they're going to look at you like, you're crazy. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Who are you? you? Something's wrong here. But if you're persistent, we all want to feel like we belong to something. Yeah. And if they can tell that you genuinely are concerned, man, they just latch right on. So as we're out in, if it's a work environment, if we're just even in our own communities, you know, we have lost the art of communication. Oftentimes we don't know who our neighbors are. We, we, if we have garages, we pull into the garage, just stepping out in, in your yard and having a conversation and saying hi to your neighbors. I found, you know, kids, kids are very open and kids can be a wide age range. Uh, you know, we had four to 19, right. At the confidence. And we had, people from uh, families that are in a church, people who weren't in a church, you know. So I have heard everybody say here, you know, we're pouring into, be the example, just like Jesus. He walked. It wasn't that he was out 
preaching per se sometimes it was just something special they're like what is it about them and if you're genuine it doesn't matter if they're kids or adults they're going to see that and they're going to be like i want some of that because that's exactly what will touch them i want that peace i want that i want that just feeling you know grounded yeah um man i can go on and on about what they want they're they just want to feel like they belong and they want safety and security right and we know that all that is found in our lord right so um being those hands and feet uh and and the confidence really brings that along because one of the i just love i love 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 having the different ages there it relationships Jesus doesn't say it's a checkoff list. It's a relationship. Yeah. And so they had the opportunity to learn about relationships right where they were at. Didn't matter what age they could talk about their surroundings, who's in their network and they could grow. Um, and, you know, as we get older, you know, I'm getting in that older phase and I'm thinking, man, I don't, those younger kids really can't relate to me like they do Greta and, and, Victoria and things like that, but I can pour into the younger ones and, and I can help and mentor and develop them in the things. And sometimes we don't have that. Um, we may go, we may go and do things in a routine, whether it's church or, or practices, I don't know, but it's just, I seen all that occur through our confidence. And um, I just have to say for Maggie, one of the things that drew me to Maggie, God opened those doors. She said, we're from the same state. How? I mean, look at God shine. I moved to Tennessee and I'm like, I got to, you got to meet Maggie. You got to meet Maggie, you know, and Maggie and Michelle. And so it's like, okay, okay. And God opened it up. But the same thing that I'm saying about, they see the genuineness. People can talk a talk, but when you're walking the talk, it, it's very, everybody can see that and it just draws you to them. And so, um, you know, that's what moving forward ministries. I see that in every aspect. You don't cut it off. You're there for everybody. And it's, it's the full package. It's the real deal. So everybody, here's the thing, everybody that I've seen Maggie interact with, I can look at each of you on here and I just know you guys are the real deal because that's who she, if she puts herself around, you know? So Real recognizes real. That's what the rappers say. Real. real. <laughs> That's right. Right. Yeah, thank you for your kind words, Robin. It is true. It's interesting because Robin and I, we knew mutual people and people kept saying, you need to meet Robin. And I'm like, I don't have time for the friends I have right now. I'm sorry. I was being so <laughs> really? I'm like, I don't. And then and, and the Lord quickened me. And then I was teaching at a retreat and Robin was there. And I'm like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to meet you. So it's really great. And she, we love her. Michelle and I absolutely love working with her and so forth. So thank you for your kind words, Robin. So Michelle, those of you that do not know, okay, Michelle is the real mastermind behind all this because she's like, <laughs> I'm just the big mouth, okay? She takes takes all my craziness, all of it. And she wraps it up with a pretty bow and says, okay. And then whenever I get that whole ADHD thing going and I'm going a hundred different miles an hour, she's like, kick it down to 40. Okay. <laughs> so Michelle, talk about the importance of Godfidence and interacting with these other sisters and why we do what we do. Well, I think it's the Lord's heart for unity, you yeah. know, he wants to bring people together. He wants his body to be one. And uh, Godfidence brings unity between mothers and daughters, and it brings unity between different churches. You know, and I think that's what Moving Forward Ministries is all about is unity. Unifying husbands and wives, unifying the family unit. I know that in the future, uh, Maggie's, uh, you know, dreams are of uh, a, a Godfidence for boys and their fathers. And, uh, also for a school, you know, to help students that are just are struggling in the in regular school. And so I believe that confidence is about unity. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Well said, because it is about unity. I believe that iron sharpens iron. And I believe that we are all on this mission together. And I don't know about y'all, and I think this is a safe enough group to say it. And somebody out there is probably going to go, I can't believe she said that. But you remember whenever you like you were young and and girls were just catty, okay? They were just like, um, 
backstabbing after your boyfriend, the whole nine yards and all of that. Whenever I became a Christian and realized that there were good godly women out there, I got so excited. It's like, I just want to be with all of y'all all the time because there's stuff that you have that I don't have. And there's stuff that I have that you might not have. And together it's just like a beautiful cake. It's got all this ingredients of diversity and love and joy. And, and some people are quieter and some people are noisier. You know which one I am. And so but with me and Cheryl, she's like my, you know, she's like my little sister. I just met her Saturday. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's my sister. <laughs> I, I am. I'm pretty loud. <laughs> so it, it, but it takes all of that because we can each reach different people. So I want to shift gears a little bit. And I want to talk to Sherry a little bit about self-image uh, and because that directly affects our mental health. And we've got so many people that use drugs and alcohol with it being recovery month. I want to piggyback on that. And with suicide prevention month, Sherry, you see it a lot because of the ministry that you do and actually your own things areas. Can you, if you were to talk to someone right now in that camera that is dealing with self image. Okay. What would you say to them? Well, it really is whatever you're focusing on, it's getting larger. So if you're focusing on this world, the world is getting larger inside of you and to, and to change what you're focusing on, because like so many of you have said here, you know, it's, it's really about focusing on God and seeing the bigger picture. And, you know, like I even mentioned earlier, focusing on the eternal people, nobody ever talked to me about being eternally focused and I had no choice, but to go through life being so focused on trying to manage everybody's perception of me. And that just perpetually led me down a rabbit hole of, of depression and isolation. And I never knew that that I was a weapon being formed against myself because that was exactly what the enemy wanted. And so now I'm at the point where I'm helping women to understand that, you know, you keep seeking what the world tells you to seek and you're going to keep getting a byproduct of that. And so when you switch things around and you start walking in the direction of what God wants us to do and to pursue his will, live in alignment with Christian values, know where to go and how to get Christian values, no under, understand that it's okay to go against the crowd because that means you're going in the right direction. You're not going in the direction of the enemy. It's a completely, it's a game changer. And you know, it really doesn't matter. The way I the way I talk to the women that I coach and, and even my own daughters is imagine yourself standing on a stage right now. I want you to see that the only person in that audience while you're on stage is God. Because at the end of the day, when you meet him and you make your meet your maker and you're staring at him, he's gonna tell you how proud he was for everything that you did. So only see him in the audience. Don't see everybody else, only focus, eyes locked on him, no doubt, and then just keep walking on the water in that direction. So you know, that's something I just teach women all the time. Stop pursuing the lust of your flesh. Stop pursuing the number on the scale. It keeps you constantly looking down. And I believe, you know, in my case, because I teach women about weight loss and seeking God, um, I find that it, it helps us come to the end of ourselves. You know, sometimes God is the only answer when we can't get out of weight loss. And then we find when we seek God instead of a number, um, Weight loss is a byproduct, but life gain is what you start stepping into. And that's what nobody tells you about. Wow. That's so yeah. good, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. Okay. So Nettie's in the house. Nettie's in the house. Yay. Okay. So mm -hmm. Cheryl, I had Cheryl share a little bit about uh, Friends Forever Club. And so, but I would like you to speak to um, that person that might be watching, because we're talking a little bit, uh, just dibble dabbling a little bit because it's way too deep to go into it. Uh, some mental health issues that come from uh, low self-image and that leads to suicidal tendencies and or drug addiction and things like that. And I know you personally experienced bullying and Cheryl shared with us about Friends Forever and why it was formed. But can you speak to maybe that teen or that mother or that person out there watching? Because this is going to end up, this goes all over. This is going to go on my YouTube and, you know, a bunch of people are going to see it on there. Some people are hopping in and out on live. Facebook doesn't like me. So we're not getting a lot of, that's all right. I'm not, I don't really like them either. They're a necessary evil. Did y'all get that? Your algorithm? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but, um, and it will be on creative motion network television. So if someone is watching, 
and they have been bullied and they feel the lowest of the lowest. Nettie, what would you say to them? Um, I would say, first of all, I know how you feel. Um, maybe more than first of all, actually. Second of all, I know how you feel. First of all is Jesus knows how you feel. And um, they call Jesus the, the man of sorrows, man of many sorrows. Mm -hmm. um, so he empathizes with, with you. And even though you're feeling low right now, uh, God loves you so much. And his opinion of you is so great. Um, you're so valuable and uh, you're so special to him. And he created you on purpose. And you're not here by mistake. And you're not listening to this. You're not listening to us by mistake. Um, God wants you to, to turn to him and to meditate on his word because his word never changes and he never changes and his opinion of you never changes. Um, he sent his son Jesus to die for you so that if you put your faith in him, he promises to give you new life filled with hope and peace. Um, and that's really truly where, where any of us, all of us here um, have gotten our peace and our hope mm -hmm. and our power is through Jesus. So I just want to encourage you to just turn to Jesus um, and he will give you beauty for ashes and he will yes. use the pain that you're feeling and he will make it a part of your purpose and use you exceedingly abundantly above anything you could ever, ever thought of or asked of. And that's what it says in the Bible. Amen. That's so good. That's so good. Cheryl, you going to add to that? Yeah, sure. Um, I was actually thinking of there's a scripture that um, my granny would always tell me, and it's James 4, 8, and it's the um, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And I know that it's so hard sometimes for us to, well, I don't see him, or I, don't, I don't feel him. It's, it's hard, but when you when you lock in and you focus, kind of like uh, Sherry Kapoor was saying, focusing on him. It, it starts to the the weight of the world and the noise starts to dwindle down because it's not as loud because you do experience this peace. And there's a verse that says we're two or more gathered in his name. I'm there. So um, like you even said, Maggie, that you had girls that were being mean to you. But as soon as you flipped over and found godly Christian girls, like they're out there, people are out there that will support you and love you and encourage you. So don't right. feel forever alone because you're not. Because as soon as you flip and you decide, I'm going to turn from my sin and repent and I'm going to follow Jesus, he has a group of people sitting right there to support you, to walk alongside you. And that's why we do life together. So that's what I yes. would say. That's beautiful. And it is true. It is true. Going And, and a lot of the reason that I was, I was operating in a spirit of rejection. And so if you live by man's approval, you will die with their rejection. I mean, it's just a, it, it happens over and over again. So I did not know that I was projecting that and I was attracting those, those type of people. And, you know, I was young and dumb. And so the purpose of God finance is so that you guys realize there are things that we went through that we are trying to help the younger generation understand. You don't have to walk in that way. Just like Samantha was talking about, someone needs to care enough to say, hey, this is what's going on. So thank you very much, ladies, for your comments. So Samantha, I know how passionate Builder a Bridge is about suicide awareness and so much. OK, so I always brag on them because I love they marched right out to the Nash Chase Bridge where lots of people have committed suicide and they hung signs that said, like, you matter. If you if you die, no one will know how, how much you love them. I mean, all this. So talk a little bit about that message behind all of that. Yeah, one of the girls in our group um, had an older sibling that died by suicide um, on that bridge. And a lot of the girls in our group just didn't understand how someone that looked like they had it all together would want to die by suicide, would want to take their life. And it's like, I mean, people are not just going to wear it across their forehead that says, you know, suicidal or, you know, I'm anxious or I'm depressed or I need help. Um, people kind of are fake and wear it well, but people are not going to do that. They're just not. So the girl said, what do, What can we do? Miss Samantha, we need to do something. So they went out there with their poster board and tape and colored Sharpies. And we went out on that Natchez Trace Bridge. It's a 150 foot drop. 
and they started posting messages like you matter you are loved um i i'll listen if nobody's here for you i'm here for you they posted their phone numbers i mean everything and um i remember it just like yesterday there was a woman that was there that had a box that she just released doves and the girls like were just staring at at the whole thing. I mean, it was almost like there was just such a deaf silence. There were so many people along there, but there was such a deaf silence. It's so peaceful out there for some reason. It's a beautiful view, but you can feel the weight and the heaviness of the sorrow and sadness and the lives that are taken. And it's almost like the trail of tears I've explained to the girls. Like you don't realize how many people have actually cried and stood where you have stood that have actually jumped. So many numbers go unreported. But that one mom came up to um, myself and one of the parent volunteers and two of the girls in our group and just said, thank you so much for what you're doing. Because if my son would have seen those signs, maybe he wouldn't have taken his life just two days ago. So I said, see, you don't even know how much of a difference you're making and what these posters mean to anyone, regardless of what mental state you're in. Just knowing that you're loved and you're valued just gives you one more reason, or at least should give you one more reason. Scripture says in Psalm 139, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If that does not encourage you and motivate you that, I mean, to take some devils out and demons out and knock them down because Jesus made you on purpose for a purpose. I don't know. I don't know what would. Yeah. Well said, well said. And I absolutely love that. I love what the girls did. And, you know, it actually, the newscast came out to see what was going on and it brought a lot of exposure to it. I heard a testimony of a woman that survived that. And uh, have you heard her speak? She was speaking at uh, She's a good friend of ours and um, she's a good friend of mine personally. And she is a friend of Built Her Bridge as well. So I have tried to, she lives in another state. Um, she just texted me a couple of weeks ago that she's actually moving back here. So I'm definitely replugging and reconnecting her back to Build Her Bridge because she made that jump and the branches caught her fall. And she is the second known suicide survivor on that bridge. So she has an amazing, powerful testimony and she is a believer as well. So. Yes. Yes. I uh, heard her at uh, over at Franklin. My uh, cousin sits on the board of the, um, Oh gosh, it's, it's a, it's a clinic over in Franklin. I know you know it. Um, but she had, they had their annual fundraiser dinner and I heard her speak and I was going, man, God's going to get some glory out of this. The devil done mess with the wrong girl. So I love it. I love it. I love it. So Vanetta, Vanetta's a mother of seven and she's got grandbabies and everything. So she's seen a lot of changes during the teen tween years hormonally, environmentally, all of the different things. What would you say, Vanetta, to a parent that is saying, how can I uh, nurture my teen to help them have a positive self-image? I would say definitely, first and foremost, spend a lot of time in prayer because the Lord has anointed you to be the parent to that child. And the Holy Spirit would give you wisdom and insight and clarity and discernment as you minister to your child. Sometimes we could go so focused in parent mode that we miss the opportunity to minister to that child. You know, everything is not uh, to always bring correction, but there are some times that God will have you come under and just love on that child and just speak faithful words over that child because we got to also keep in mind that there is a real enemy that hates us there is an enemy that hate our children so we have a responsibility to speak words of life over that child we have the privilege mm -hmm. to pour our life into that child so I would say always have an open door policy. Make sure that you are, because even as a mother of eight, seven daughters and one son, I would literally have to be in the spirit most of the time because that's a lot of kids. I was like, Lord, I need for you to show up, Jesus, because it was not easy, you know? But at the end of the day, Instead of being independent, I always wanted to make sure that I was totally dependent on God because 
I don't own those kids. I'm just a steward over those children that the Lord lent to me. So I wanted to make sure that I was a good steward of those children. Teach them God's word. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to rely on the Lord. Teach them how to hear from the Holy Spirit. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that as they go out into this world, that they are equipped with the tools that is needed and necessary as they continue to fight the good fight of faith. Man, that's so good. Hallelujah. I feel like I've been to church. <laughs> that's so good, Vanetta. I love it. I can't imagine having eight kids. Uh, I'm glad the Lord did not trust me as much as you. And, but I'm glad you took the whole fruitful and multiply scripture very serious. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Greta, Greta, your generation, okay? Your generation is like this. You know, I mean, they're so consumed, okay? Um, how do you, as an 18-year-old beautiful woman, maintain balance in a selfie world? Mm. Well, I would honestly say it is kind of like what Veneto was talking about. Like, it's on my knees daily. And having to deny my flesh and like the, like the scripture says, like, deny your flesh and take up your cross. So that's, it's a daily act of uh, repentance and surrender mm -hmm. and um, just talking to the Lord and truly like you are, you become who you hang around. So like, you know, I want to be more like Jesus. So why wouldn't I want to hang out with him more, obviously? <laughs> so, you know, when you start to, whatever you fill your mind with ultimately like can start to take root. And so my mindset has always been, well, why wouldn't I fill my mind with scriptures? Why wouldn't I fill my, my heart with things that are going to lift me up and not tear me down? Um, cause I definitely have had, you know, when I, when I don't read my Bible as much or I don't have time to spend with, as much with the Lord. Um, and I'm on like, I'm, I am scrolling and, um, putting other things above the Lord because you know it it happens we do it I'm not perfect um I I, I notice a difference you know I am more self-centered um but you're right like my generation is so consumed with ourselves um I heard someone say that we're kind of a generation who thinks we're the center of our own universe and you know, with social media, it's like your life is perfect or Snapchat. It's like you're always looking at yourself like a mirror. Like every every time you pass a mirror, you got to stop. You got to examine yourself. Oh, is that perfect? Is that perfect? You're like nitpicking every every flaw that you have rather than seeing the beauty for who the Lord made you to be rather than, mm -hmm. you know, using his word kind of as a reflection of like your heart, you know, because the Lord looks at the inside rather than the outside. Amen. And I just pray that daily as I spend more time with him, that he would use me as a vessel. He would help me pour out to those around me. And, um, you know, as I fill up vertically with him to pour out horizontally to other people, that my life would be a reflection of who he is. And I think that's how I kind of, <laughs> not that I don't struggle with, um, you know, like image and like, um, you know, trying to still be fashionable or all that, those kind of things, but learning that truly if the Lord like cares more about your heart, then that's what I want to care more about too. So. Man, that's really good. Well said, well said. And that just encourages me. So like when you can receive from an 18 year old and, and God is okay with you wanting to look nice, you know, we want to present our best for God. Uh, we want to brush our teeth and do our hair and things like that. We don't want to be smelly. We don't want to misrepresent him, but it, whenever we put our will, whether it be our appearance, whether it be our profession, whether it be anything above his will, we're always going to miss it. And thank you for being so transparent, Greta, because, you know, that's this is why I have young people like Greta and Hadley and different young people that join us on these is because they're they're speaking truth. They're not going, oh, I'm super 
uh, spiritual Susie. And yes, my life is perfect. And be like me and follow Jesus. They're saying, hey, the struggle is real. There are times where I have to pull back and say, okay, have I spent enough time with the Lord? What am I doing to cultivate a deeper relationship with him? Am I putting idols in the way and so forth? So thank you, Greta. That was so good. So Robin, in January, January 15th, we're having a confidence in living inside out. And it's going to be on inner beauty. What would you say to the mamas, the daughters, the tweens, the teens? They're like, I don't have time to go to something like that. Oh, I'd say you don't have time not to go to it. Because, you know, as Greta was talking, I was thinking about in the small group I was in, and um, Benetta was talking, giving your testimony at the Godfidence. You shared some stuff about your life. And the girls, um, you know, they said we were talking about you honoring your parents. And how can you do that? And realizing that nobody's perfect. And so as Greta was saying, it just reminded me of Vanetta's and, and even our conversation. If we're not communicating, taking time to sit and talk, we can put on a good facade appearance. We can talk the best talk. We can walk appearance, but the truth comes out when they see us all the time and standing alongside us. So people will sit in silence sometimes and think, it's shame. I'm the only one that has this. I'm the only one dealing with this or, you know, these things. And that's not true. If we all get together and start talking and, and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and be truthful, like God has done, he's bringing these, I'm struggling with this. You know, I, I know I'm not supposed to, but I'm struggling with this. There's probably somebody sitting in the room that's dealing with the same thing and they need to hear it. So we need, you know, to have those conversations to get out and hear, um, other women, other children, other girls, whatever age group hearing about the things that they're walking through daily and just being real with each other. Um, so we can walk alongside and encourage, you know, and as we get older, we know that we all will hold each other accountable. And even our teenagers need to realize they can hold their friends accountable. Yeah. You know what I mean? They need that. So um, they need to see those examples. They need to hear them. Yeah, absolutely. So good. So good. Thank you very much. So mm -hmm. Michelle, accountability. So Michelle's one of my very close accountability people. Um, so uh, when it comes to accountability, do you see this generation not uh, tapping into that as much? And how can uh, we as adults mirror and teach our kids and our grandkids that accountability is a good thing to help them being accountable to what God says about who they are. Like, you know, cause we're to bring it back to the whole self image thing. The enemy is not creative. He lies to all of us. He's told us all, Oh, if this was different or if that was different or, you know, nobody understands you're all alone, the isolation. How do we gather the younger, help the other younger generation understand that they're not alone in that? Well, I think about my grandchildren and, um, I, you know, some of the things I took away from Godfidence is even helping me with my four-year-old grandson. And we've been having fun with the Rewind all week and, and different <laughs> things like that. And uh, I think about what Vanetta said, just as a mother, teaching your children to rely on God, to pray. But uh, the biggest thing is, is that, um, to be honest, you know, that um, for children that are in church, you know, if your parents are in church with you, then of course you want to go to them. But I know sometimes my granddaughter wanted to come to me and, uh, and you know, she would tell me things that her mom and dad weren't very happy about her telling me. <laughs> but, you know, to me, it was like, I wasn't going to go tell anybody, but I was able to talk to her about it and discuss it with her. And so I think that as parents, if we are not making a connection with our children, which we need to pray to do that, but if we're not, we need to allow room for them to talk to somebody else, you know, yeah. so that they can be accountable to somebody and somebody who's trustworthy, of course, and uh, not take it personal. You know, it's just sometimes that's the way it is, you know, but um, I just want to encourage young people to always have somebody to talk to and don't hold things in and don't think you're the only one and uh, anything that's negative in your life to speak it out and talk to somebody about it that you trust and uh, a, really a Christian 
that you know is a good Christian so they can tell you what the Lord says about you. Just like all the ladies here are talking about what the Lord says about you. So just, uh, you know, for parents to be open for their children to talk to somebody else, if need be, and for children to be open to talking, period, about what's going on in their lives. That's really good, because I know when I moved from one state, uh, I moved from Florida to Tennessee, and this was in 2005, and the first thing I did is I looked for a prayer partner, I looked for a mentor, and I looked for someone that would hold me accountable, because on my own, okay, we get we get all caught up in a whole bunch of mess, but when you got a sister that's looking you in your eyes going, uh, what's your thought life like, you mm -hmm. know, how's your attitude, how are you treating your husband? You know, all those things, it becomes real. And it's the same for Greta's generation to say, hey, you know, how many hours are you spending on Insta? Are you making a God out of TikTok? And, and you know, I mean, we have to be real and transparent in order to cultivate that safety. So we're out of time, but I'm telling you, you guys have been absolutely amazing. We've had two special guests tonight. We've had Sherry Capilla, who has never joined us before. And I wanted to have her on here because I just love, 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 love her. And we had Cheryl and Nettie on here. So if you have not already uh, followed these women, please do, because there is listen we don't have all the answers but we can point you to where all the answers are because we know the one who hung the stars in the sky and we know who is the lifter of our heads and so if you are struggling with self-image if you are struggling with uh, even to the point of depression or suicidal tendencies reach out for help reach out uh it you know like Samantha says, and, and they say it in all the recovery circles, it is so important to know that it's okay to not be okay, but there's no way that you can stay there. And if you cannot stay there, if you surround yourself with people that are going to pour into you, encourage you, uh, and, and hold you accountable, and that might not look too comfortable to some people. You know, it's like, nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm, a, I'm my own woman. I'm, I'm 18 years old. I could rule the world, you know? There's a t-shirt that says, if you want to know the answers to life's questions, ask a teenager why they still know everything, right? So it doesn't matter if you are 10 or if you are 70. We are here. We are praying for you. We believe in you. And we know that you've got what it takes uh, to be able to tap into the spirit of God. And it's not, not about you. It's about him. And that's why we call it god confidence because we can't do it, but he can. And when we trust and our confidence is in Christ and Christ alone and not in our looks and not in our bank account and not in what we do as a profession, everything shifts. So you guys be encouraged. Ladies, I want to thank you guys for being on the broadcast. Does anyone have any final words? Because if there's something burning in you, I want to make sure that it gets released. Any fine words? Okay. Well, I hope that all of you all will have a blessed night. And I want to thank the ladies on here tonight. Uh, as you can see, I, like I've said before, I know the coolest people on the planet. So my name is Maggie. Check all these ladies out. Take heed. Spend time with Jesus. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time here.